Hello folks and welcome back to Around Our World in 80. We're doing kind of another informal video. I have my uh, Cybermen appendages in. <laughs> so today the video that we're going to be bringing you guys is how we did um, our Zelda cosplay outfits. Um, some of the things we just ended up buying, like Jared found a pair of pants at a resale shop. We found boots on Amazon um, for him and just like an undershirt. I didn't make everything. I uh, didn't have time to make everything. Um, but we did make a good portion of uh, our cosplay stuff. And the way that I'm going to go about this, I'm not going to show you like how I sewed things or how I sanded things or, uh, you know, uh, the individual steps like that. But I am going to walk you through the process of all the different pieces that I did end up making, uh, the steps I took to get to the final product. And then I am going to focus more on the parts where I do sew because that is a strength of mine. And I'm not going to focus or show a lot of footage of the parts where I 3D printed and sanded. A, because who wants to watch me sanding? And B, there's a lot of other great youtubers such as punish props that do a really fantastic job of breaking down this process way better than i do because honestly this is one of the first big uh projects that i did that actually involved 3d printing and sanding and, and prepping the surface for paint and stuff like that so without further ado let's jump right in so to start this tutorial off i thought i would show you all the fabric that i did end up buying for this particular project First off, I got a faux leather, uh, nothing too expensive. I got a gold with a nice sheen for uh, the Sheikah Slate. I got a ton of white fabric for Zelda's dress. It's a really nice uh, knit that I think is gonna drape really nice. And then also for that, I got some stretchy uh, brown knit. Nothing too special, that's gonna be for Reagan's dress. I got lining for the white Zelda dress and the PS de Resistance, the blue fabric for Link's tunic. Really happy with this color and I think it matches pretty perfectly. To start the tunic, I went ahead and made a test pattern just to make sure it was going to fit Jared. I got my thread, my fabrics, I bought white for the applique, and then in my giant drawer of tools, I got my fabric scissors, I've got my rulers, I've got other rulers, <laughs> I've got all sorts of different types of pens because I'm going to need to make a lot of marks to make sure I get everything set up correctly more different types of scissors, lots of different types of sewing pins, uh, and my uh, rotary cutters. Now I went ahead and used the pattern that I created to cut out uh, the fabric pieces. I've got two uh, separate sleeves. I have one front that's cut on a fold and one back that's cut on a fold. And you'll notice that I went ahead and cut out the uh, pieces for the applique. Once I sewed the tunic together, I went ahead and hemmed it all on the bottom and then on the sleeves. Then I took the white fabric that I was going to sew onto the tunic and I traced all of the different pieces on Link's tunic onto that white fabric. I didn't worry about orientation except for just trying to use the fabric in the most efficient way possible. I labeled each section of which pieces went on which part of the tunic and then I just cut everything out. Once all those little pieces were cut out and organized, I went ahead and I traced onto the tunic where all of the pieces should go. And then once that was done, I was able to pin all of the white pieces in place and put them through the sewing machine. It would be a lot easier if I were able to uh, sew all the white pieces on before I sewed the tunic together, but a lot of the pieces actually overlap some seams and some hems and so I decided to just go ahead and sew the tunic together first and then put all the white pieces on. The other thing that I should have done before I sewed all the pieces on was I should have put fuse ease on all of the edges. When I ran everything through the sewing machine, it frayed everything a lot. And so I ended up having to use fuse ease anyway. And I was constantly worried about getting it all over the tunic part and making that look weird. And I had to spend a lot of time uh, nitpicking and cutting all of the uh, uh, fraying parts so that everything looked good. 
But I got everything sewn on. I cut off all of the pieces that I didn't want. And then I added two grommets to the front V section of the neck so that I could run some cotton canvas type uh, thread through there for the part that is supposed to hold that front piece together. And that is Link's tunic. So for Zelda's dress, I actually did um, a lot of math. She has a underskirt and then she kind of has this piece that goes over it uh, and kind of drapes behind her. So I did a lot of math trying to figure out how much fabric I was going to need for the gather and yes, I still use my T89 from college. I went ahead and I took all the uh, pieces that I used for my pattern to create a pattern for myself and cut out all of my fabric. Then I took my bodice pieces and I laid them out together and I made sure that everything was facing the correct direction and then I pinned everything together and I ran it through the sewing machine and I even had a little bit of help. So I repeated the same process for the bodice uh, for the lining as well. I cut everything out of the lining fabric. And then what I did was I took all the outer shell fabric with the knit and I laid out my first part of my skirt. And then on top of that part of the skirt, I added the part of the skirt that like has the wrap around so it doesn't close all the way in the front but it does wrap around in the back. I pulled all of my threads so that the gathers would be uh, somewhat even. <laughs> it's a lot of fabric so it's hard to make sure that everything is perfectly even but once all of that was done I pinned everything together with a bodice on top right sides facing each other and I ran all of that through the sewing machine. I did the same process for I took the lining uh, skirt and I sewed that to the bodice and then I took the bodice pieces of the outer shell and the lining and I pinned all of those together right sides facing together and then I sewed along the uh, top part of the lining so that everything would fold over and give it a really really nice clean finish. Once that was done I sewed up the back seam and added a zipper and everything was finished. So next up was Reagan's Sheikah slate dress and the first thing that I actually did was I took some measurements of her and basically created a square pattern and then went and looked at my reference photos and figured out how to get all of the Sheikah slate uh, parts to fit on each other. Once I had basically my template put together in Photoshop, I took all of the individual layers and I cut them out based on what color each layer was supposed to be. I then labeled all of my pieces with which color that they were and whether they were supposed to go on the front or on the back. I then took the time and I grabbed some muslin and I made a test pattern for my uh, little square dress that I was going to make, Regan. It's a really good thing because my first one ended up being too small, which was not good. So definitely suggest that if you get the time, go ahead and make a test pattern for anything that you're going to be doing in cosplay. Once I had that figured out, I decided that I wanted to have a blue uh, shirt for her to wear underneath this dress and I wanted it to be the same blue as Jared's uh, link tunic. So I found a free pattern for a t-shirt online and I cut out all of my fabric pieces and I put it together like a normal shirt would get put together, uh, sewing on the shoulder seams, uh, creating the uh, armbands for the sleeves, sewing the sleeves on, and then hemming everything. Once the blue uh, shirt was done, I went ahead and moved on to the dress. I cut out the fabric on the with the new dimensions for everything to make sure that it would fit Reagan. I made sure that everything was relatively square. It's hard when it's a really cheap knit like that. And then I went about uh, getting all the details cut out. The first method that I tried was I actually took the fabric and I went ahead and I put the iron-on adhesive on the back and then I cut out everything using an X-Acto knife. And this ended up being a nightmare. Not only did it take forever, but the uh, fabric and the iron-on ended up chewing through all of my X-Acto knives. 
So I decided that I needed to find a better way to do that. But before I did that, I went ahead and I ironed on all the lovely gold pieces that I had just so painstakingly cut out. Now here's where I got smart. I decided that what I was going to do was I was actually going to trace everything onto the uh, iron-on adhesive on the part that uh, is just the backing. And that did not melt when I was ironing it, so I was able to not only use a lot less of my iron-on material, but I was able to um, do it in a much more efficient manner using regular scissors and I got a lot better uh, outlines. I would then take those pieces and I would actually iron them on to the fabric and then I could just use my fabric scissors to cut everything out. Much, much better process. Once everything was ironed on, I sewed the front and back together. I added some gold uh, stretchy ribbon for the sleeves and the Sheikah Slate dress was done. All right, next project up on the list was actually the straps for Link that hold all of his weapons on his person. So uh, I actually went to the source because you can actually, on the menu screen, or I guess the inventory screen, you can actually rotate Link and see all the different components and how the straps work together. So I drew out what that looked like. I took some measurements off of Jared. And then I took my faux leather and grabbed all my other supplies like my buckles, my rivets, my hole punches, everything that I would need to put these straps together. I then cut out the straps to the appropriate length for Jared and I added the buckles. I started doing the buckles uh, through the sewing machine, but this ended up being a much more tedious process and I ended up hand sewing most of the stuff on his straps. I then marked out where I wanted all the holes and took my hole punch and uh, punched all those holes out. I repeated the process for all three straps and then I measured and cut out, um, I call them strap holders. It's the little loops that go on belts so that all the excess uh, strap that goes through the buckle doesn't flop around like crazy. And I did learn my lesson from the buckles and I ended up hand sewing these together and then sliding them onto the belts. I did that process for all three straps, ended up not taking too terribly long, and by the end of it, I had some very lovely straps and my Link costume was really coming along. Next on the list of things to make was the belt that Zelda wears around her dress. I couldn't find any uh, files for the belt centerpiece, the belt buckle, but I went ahead and I modeled one myself in Fusion 360. Then I cut two identical pieces of leather because her belt has um, kind of some details that are more raised on top of the other. I took one of those pieces and I drew out her design. I marked all the places to cut out and I cut out all of those pieces. I then painted the bottom layer the blue um, with some acrylic paint that I just had laying around the house and uh, painted the top part gold according to my reference photos and then I let all of that dry. Meanwhile I sanded and painted my 3D printed belt buckle and started assembling everything together. I made sure that everything was going to fit well, I mod podged it and laid everything down. I trimmed the excess uh, leather that I had on the sides and then I painted the dots all along the part that I did not get uh, cut out. I then took a piece of fabric that was the same color as the bottom of the belt and I fed it through the uh, belt buckle that I had 3D printed and then I cut some slots for it in the belt. I fed that fabric through the slots and then I mod podged the uh, fabric onto the back of the belt that way the belt would be secure whenever i was wearing it and it wouldn't have a tendency to come off due to the curve of my body i then added some snaps so that it could easily get on and off but still be snug and i wouldn't have to keep pulling it up all day and the belt was done the last bit of fabric slash leather stuff that I had to do was Link's bracer on his arm. He only has one. I had to do some math and some measuring to figure out what size I needed it to be. I went into Photoshop and I made myself a template so that I knew all of the little detail pieces. 
And then I took a piece of tracing paper um, that I had printed graph lines on, and I just really refined my line so that it wasn't as disjointed as it was on my Photoshop file. I traced one side and made sure that was exactly how I wanted it to be, and then I folded the piece of paper over and uh, made sure that it was symmetrical on the other side. I then took a Sharpie and I refined all of my lines and then made several copies. I then cut out the bracer bottom piece just like I did for the belt and then I took a second piece that was identical in size and I started cutting out all of the details. For this part, I did use an X-Acto knife. I had a fresh blade and it honestly didn't get dull until probably the last two cuts, which I left uh, pretty s small. So I was pretty happy with how this process went. I then made the bottom piece a little bit darker just so that it would have a little bit more contrast with the top pieces. And then I went ahead and made the buckles that go on the sides um, and sewed that on before I glued any of the pieces that go on top down. That way you wouldn't be able to see the seams from the out from the top. I then went ahead, I put my uh, template down and I glued on all of the little pieces with just some Mod Podge. This is honestly one of the best adhesives that I've found for uh, this particular type of faux leather and it works really, really well. Now, if you were paying attention earlier in the video watching me making the uh, link bracer, you'll notice in the background is my 3D printer furiously printing. And what it was printing was actually these Zelda gauntlets, um, her bracelets from Breath of the Wild. I knew I really did not want to make some fabric ones. I wanted them to look decently authentic. Um, I did find this file on Thingiverse, which I was very excited about because I did not know how I would have gone about <laughs> modeling this. But I did have a lot of trouble getting them to print out. Uh, they took 24 to 36 hours to print each. The first print ended up being a little bit too small. And then the second print, uh, we made a little bit larger, but it still wasn't quite big enough. So we actually ended up having to heat form these bracelets uh, to fit my arm, which we ended up making it. But I do have two different sized gauntlets. Once they finally printed out, after a few failed prints, I took off all of the supports very, very, very carefully, and uh, ta-da, that was making me really, really happy to see a final printed product. There's my two different sizes uh, with the first pass of sanding and priming. Uh, there's them primed, a nice shade of gray, and then I spent a lot of time sanding and puttying and priming and sanding and puttying and priming, and I think I did three different passes of that. You could honestly spend so much time sanding and priming and sanding and priming, and I did not have that much time, so I had to just tell myself that it was good enough. I'm really happy with how they turned out, especially with it being the first 3D printed prop, honestly, that I've really ever done besides the small belt buckle. Emboldened by my success with the belt buckle, I went ahead and looked at some reference photos of Zelda's necklace and I decided to model my own because a lot of the necklaces that I had seen in reference photos were actually on one piece, but when you look in the game, it actually looks like it's uh, all different articulated pieces. So I made all the individual pieces best I could and I had all of those printed out on my 3D printer. I then spent a lot of time sanding and priming and sanding and priming and then I took some jump rings and some chain and I attached all of the different pieces together. I actually took some jump rings and I actually drilled a small hole into the top of each one of those little pieces so that the jump ring could fit in uh, and get glued in and not come out while I wear it. But the massive 3D printing project didn't stop there. Uh, what is Link without his sword? I did find this master sword uh, full size on Thingiverse again because my modeling is not that great. I was praising Jesus that I found this. <laughs> um, there's 14 different pieces that had to get printed and this was honestly one of those moments where I didn't know if I was going to be able to get it done. Uh, I was having issues with my 3D printer and I was having to overcome a huge learning curve. However, we figured out a lot of it. I now know more about 3D printing and that's part of the reason we do this, right, is to learn. 
And after I printed all of those pieces, I put them together with five minute epoxy. I then spent the same amount of time uh, sanding and priming and sanding and priming uh, as I did with some of the other pieces, making sure that my surface was as smooth as possible with the limited amount of time I had. Uh, when you're a mom and a wife and you're trying to do everything else, you kind of just gotta say it's good enough. But at this point, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Uh, I gave it a little bit of weathering and some clear coats, and it is ready to go. So there you go, folks. That's all of the things that we made, all of the processes, steps, everything that it took to get to our final product. I'm not going to show you the final product yet because as we are recording, we actually haven't gone to the Scarborough Fair and uh, worn all of our stuff at once. We've tried everything on, made sure it all works, um, but we haven't actually gone to do our cosplay. So definitely make sure that you are tuned in. I think the schedule that I have is for two weeks from now. Uh, that's when we're going to be showing you guys our outfits and uh, show you guys what we do at the Scarborough Fair. So we'll see you guys then. Bye!